Welcome to a special edition of the Glenn Beck Program. The story of America is really one of self-reliance and optimism and profound faith. Not only in the context of religious freedom, but also in the unprecedented faith in the ability of human beings to control their own destiny. And while the spirit of personal responsibility was extraordinarily strong with our founders, great patriots like Thomas Paine, he argued for the redistribution of wealth right out of the bat. Uh, Alexander Hamilton, he wanted a central bank. Well, they wound up losing those battles, but there were plenty who kept on fighting. The Constitution kept those dogs at bay for a better part of 200 years. But eventually, those seeking a different path than the ones the founders settled on, realized the only way to really defeat the Constitution was for the people to stop reading it. Progressives realized victory required changing history. To defeat them, we have to correct that. Progressives know how powerful history is. When these truths get told and the lies get corrected, the game is going to be on. It's pulling the mask off the monster. Next week, we'll dive deeper into the progressive script, but today we dismantle the first act. We've always been told that genocidal dictators of the world, oh, they're just manifestations of the hateful right, that the left-wing icons like Che and Mao and Stalin need to be understood in context. Tonight, we set the record straight. We live in a time that seems to move faster than time. A place that seems to have no place for the truth. A reality that seems to have no connection to reality. So to get our feet on solid ground in the future, we must first walk through the past with our eyes wide open. Government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. That's modern conservatism in a nutshell. Yet, we're always told that Nazi Germany, who controlled every aspect of its citizens' lives, was somehow right-wing. Is that true? Or is it an attempt to distract from other much more inconvenient similarities? They say, you know, Hitler was a right-winger because of X, Y, and Z. I say, well, what was Stalin's position on X, Y, and Z? The common assumption is, is that the Nazis were a right-wing phenomenon, they were a right-wing party, uh, that Hitler was a man of the right and all the rest. And there are a lot of problems with this. His social agenda was for expanding universal access to health care, for expanding access to education. It was for cradle-to-grave welfare state. It was for attacking uh, big business and high finance. People say, well, Hitler abolished labor unions. He was right-wing then. Well, how did labor unions do under Stalin? How are labor unions doing under Fidel Castro? Almost anything you can find on a checklist that allegedly proves Hitler was a right-winger, you can apply to almost any one of the major communist dictators of the 20th century, and the similarities are almost identical. Today, this idea may seem controversial, but as the Nazis were rising to power, it wasn't controversial. It was common knowledge. November 28, 1925, a tiny article printed in the New York Times describing the early internal struggle for the identity of the Nazis. A riot broke out after a Nazi speaker claimed that Lenin was the greatest man second only to Hitler. And the difference between communism and the Hitler faith was very slight. It wasn't just some nobody in the Nazi party who believed this. It was this man. Hitler's closest ally to the very end, and his hand-picked successor as Chancellor, Joseph Goebbels. Because it was so controversial, Goebbels, a master of propaganda, stopped talking about it in public. But his private writings revealed his change in approach wasn't a change of heart. The Nazi Germany attacked the uh, Soviet Union in 1941. Uh, just a week before that, he wrote uh, 
in his diary that uh, the goal of the Nazi Germany would be to destroy this Jewish Bolshevism in, in the Soviet Union as they described it uh, and instead of that uh, build the true socialism. That's what he wrote in his diary and uh, of course Goebbels was a liar uh, but uh, why would he lie to his own diary? The red shirts and the brown shirts in Germany had all sorts of members who were members of one group joining the other group and vice versa. They saw themselves as equally revolutionary organizations fighting each other for control. The Nazis versus the Bolsheviks in Germany was really a case of Coke versus Pepsi. Even as the Nazis were taking control of France, the French communist newspaper found reason to celebrate. In these sad times, it is exceptionally comforting to see many Parisian workers talking to German soldiers as friends in the street or at the corner cafe. Well done, comrades, and keep it up, even if it displeases some of the middle classes, as stupid as they are mischievous. The communists in the Reichstag voted almost uniformly with the Nazis. They voted in lockstep, and the, the slogan for the communists in the Reichstag was, first brown, then red. The general understanding among the communists, among socialists back then, was that Nazism was a stepping stone towards the ultimate victory of socialism and communism. While Hitler certainly opposed communism outwardly, he did so mainly because he disagreed with its internationalism. He was a proud German, a German nationalist, a German jingoist, not a patriot, but a nationalist. And he rejected that element of Marxism, but he embraced socialism entirely. He embraced the idea of racial solidarity, of socialism for one race. Even in Mein Kampf, he acknowledged that the movements were so close that if not for the focus on race, his National Socialist movement would really do nothing more than compete with Marxism on its own ground. But Nazi Germany had no corner on the market of racism and anti-Semitism. We can find uh, many uh, Nazi-like passages in the writings of Marx and Engels where they pour scorn on the Czechs and Hungarians and, uh, and Poles. Marx didn't like uh, Spanish, for example. He said uh, that Spanish are degenerate and that uh, Mexican are degenerated Spanish. Marx, we need to remember, was Jewish. He was a self-hating Jew, he rejected Judaism and all of the rest, but he was Jewish and Hitler hated, you know, hated Jews. I mean, this is not a newsflash. Hitler was a passionate anti-Semite and he saw Marxism as corrupted uh, with a deep-seated Jewish nature. The irony here is that so did Marx. Marx was a real anti-Semite. He wrote about the Jewish problem a generation before the Nazis started talking about the Jewish problem. He said how we had to purge the Jewish spirit from Western civilization, from global civilization. He had horrible racist things to say about Jews and of blacks. And Hitler very much inherited that Marxist analysis when it came to things like Jews and, and other races.